Hi everyone, back in the room. Nice to see you all again. If you could raise your hands on your laptop now. Can I see out there if I could start with Nick? Hi Miguel. Hey. Um, do you get an assist for that third goal? I don't know, but uh, if you help the team a little bit uh, to get what we wanted, that's exactly what we need. Everybody can contribute somehow, and I had the opportunity to do that, so good. How would you sum up the performance? It maybe it wasn't your most controlled, but you, you were very clinical. I summarized with, with the first minute of the game, that uh, in the first minute we could have been one and down. Um, I think we were really good going forward and we had all the right intention and the right energy to do it and uh, we scored three magnificent goals but we didn't have the same energy and commitment defensively and when that happens to win a game for home you're going to suffer and uh, that's what we suffered today because defensively we didn't have the right structure we didn't uh, detect with enough urgency the moments where they could activate certain spaces that we knew and uh, that's why we suffer we can see two and we could have considered another one or two what would you put that down to? I don't know. You're thinking sometimes that, yeah, I have the space, I'm doing it good, I'm controlling the game, but you are not. And uh, and I'm really happy we won the game and a lot of positive things to take on, but um, it's not going to be enough. You looked quite angry after scoring that second goal when everyone was celebrating, you called people yeah. over and you were because I didn't like how we were controlling the game and we were allowing spaces against the team that if we kept allowing this we were going to suffer and I knew that and we had to put that right and we did it for certain periods and then in the last 25 minutes of the game we lost it again where we have to show now that maturity and that understanding and show the capacity to control the game how we want it. That 3-1 after we have to make 300,000 passes in the opponent's half and when they have the right moment to, to come at us, then we can attack them. And we didn't do that. And the game was open, and you could have the feeling that the game was open right in the end. Still, so, an important win back in the top four of games. Mm. And which players particularly impressed you today? You know, I don't like to highlight players. Uh, I think you could see the contribution on the goals, um, who was involved, which, which they were key. But um, it's about the team. Sometimes when you don't have enough to win the match, it's about. Um, what they have between them that gets you an edge to somehow win the match. And this is what I like. I like the team. The, the understanding the Sacra and Odegaard in particular is starting to develop seems really exciting. Could you just talk a little bit about that? I think it's between them. I think yeah, the way the game flows, the way we attack, um, how we adapt our position in relating to each other, um, how we move the ball, the speed of that movement, the timing of it, it's, it's much better. The position that we get. Um, the threat and the sense of having the capacity to create chances that we have is much better and that we have to keep developing that. Is the, is, are we seeing maybe the benefit of the time you had in Dubai and, uh, and the weeks that you've had to be able to work with players in the training ground to develop that? Probably it can be one thing. It can be that obviously now they've been playing together and consistently for longer periods, which is very much needed. So the understanding is better. They trust each other better. They understand when to do what in in relation to what the opponent is doing. So this is good. The more they play together, I think the better they will understand. It's simple. We still a couple more. Simon Collins. Mikhail, you, um, Mikhail obviously had a really difficult summer with everything that went on and coming back later, you know, pre-season. Do you feel now he's at sort of top gear and performing at the, the best he can? I think Bukayo had uh, an experience in the summer that not a lot of players were going to ever have and I think it was great for his career because he showed the football world showed how much they like him and uh, how much they respect him and I don't think you get much more than that in football apart from winning trophies. So I think that was a big boost for him to realise in difficult moments these people are really going to give me support and the club did exactly the same as, as his teammates and then it's about leaving him that space, you know, what he says, what he's already doing, it's, it's phenomenal and, uh, and he needs that room, you know, and don't read too much, do what you do. The football is his priority in life and you can see that every day in training and he needs to continue to, to behave and live the way he's doing, nothing else. Do you think he's almost better for going through what he did? Sorry? Do you think he's almost a better player in person for going through what he did? I think so. I think experiences like that mark your, your career and uh, 
and what you learn from those difficult moments is much more probably that if we'd have scored that goal. Jason Nicholas. Hi, Mikel. I just want to ask you about Laka another day without a goal for him today, but two brilliant touches to set goals for other players. Is that a demonstration of what he brings to the team, the contribution he made? Yes, and he will still not be happy in that dressing room because he wants to score, but uh, a lot of the things that they, he does for the team are, are phenomenal. Okay, so that Darren? Um, you've been through a lot in your short period at Arsenal. Do you think those difficult moments have helped you to get through tough games like the Wolves game, or plus the Wolves game, and even the tricky moments in the I always believe that if you understand those difficult moments, like a sign to do something with your life or, a, or to understand better the purpose of why you are where you are, I think. Um, they can help you a lot. And this is what I try to do when I have a problem, when I have a, a situation, try to understand that it's happening for a reason. And not because it's me and I am, uh, everything happens to me. No, it's not the case. It happens for a reason. And what are you going to do about it? And that's how I, I try to approach it. And very quickly, how do you see the top four races? It seems to be a bit of snakes, snakes and ladders. To be fair, I don't like to look at the table a lot because um, we have games in hand. Uh, we're going to play different fixtures and I know the objective, what it is. And it's only one is train tomorrow, improve what we've done today and, and go into the next match. And, and that's it. I cannot control results and I cannot predict which matches we are going to win, draw or lose. It's impossible. If I start to do that, I think we are going to lose focus in, in what we want to do. And finally, we'll go to Matt. Uh, Mikhail, also I wanted to ask about, about Lacquer. Is he? Do you think he's playing as well as he's played in an Arsenal shirt? And, and would you... Would you like to keep him? I know he's out of contract, but would you like I don't know. I think he's, he's had really good moments in terms of goal scoring a record, probably better than what he's now. For what we ask him, for what I ask him, and the contribution that um, I need him from the team, I think he's doing really, really well. And is there a case to, would you like to keep him? There is a case. I said to you, at the end of the season, when we know where we are, we will sit down with, with those three players, and um, between all of us, we will decide what, um, what we do to move forward. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you.